We begin today with the Mishnah at the beginning of Daf Lamed. Zog Teilige Mishnah, Shloisha Achen, three brothers. Shnaim em nesun shteachoyais, two of them are married to sisters. Ve'echod nasi nochris. And the third brother is married to an unrelated wife. Mei sechod mi baliachoyais. So now, one of the brothers that are married to a sister passed away. The konas nasi nochris asishtai. So who's the only one that could do yibum in such a case? The brother that's married to a sister can't do yibum. It's an erva for him. Achoy sishtai. So the brother that's married to a nochris, so he's the only one that could do yibum, and he was miyabim, the brother's uh, wife. Umeis. And now this third brother also died. So now this third brother was married, one, to a sister of his, of his brother's wife, and also he was married to an unrelated wife. So Harishayna, the first wife, Rashi says this refers to the wife that was originally married to the first brother and fell once for Yibum and now is falling a second time for Yibum. So this Rishayna is one of the sisters, Yaitza Mishamachaisisha. So for her, there's no Yibum now because she's a sister. Shniya, the second wife of the third brother that was a Nachris, so also won't be any Yibum for her, Misham Tsarasa. Because she's a tzara of an erva. This is the halacha that we had in the beginning of the Masechta, in the first Mishnah. That when there's an erva, there's no yibum, not for the erva, and not for the second wife either, for the tzara as well. Okay, so this is a case where the erva was actually married now to this brother, and there was a second wife. So because he was married to both of these wives, so it's clear that the tzara is the tzara of an erva, and there's no yibum, not for the erva, and not for the tzara either. Now, if also Bam Maimer, if this brother that was married to Anochris and he was the only one that was able to do Yibum, he did not do Yibum yet. So he's not yet married to this uh, one of the sisters here. But he did Maimer, which is a Kedushan with the Rabbanon. So now, on one hand, because it's a Kedushan with the Rabbanon, so it's, he's married to her to some extent. So when he passes away, so you can say that he's married to one of the sisters. And he's also married to Atzara, to the second wife. So therefore, because he's married to the sister, that should patter from Yibum, not only this sister, but also the Tzara. But on the other hand, it's only Kedushim with the Rabbanon. So Menat is not yet married to her sister. So when he dies, his only wife that he's married to, Menat should be able to be available for Yibum. So therefore, what we say is, Umeis, and so now if he passes away, Nochris, the wife, the second wife that he's married to, which is the unrelated wife, for her, you only do chalitze and not yibum. You can't do yibum because there is a mimer to, another, to a sister, to an erva. And in that sense, this wife is a tzadas erva. But you can't let her go free completely because it's only a kedushim with the Rabbanon. So therefore, you have to do chalitze. So what do you see over here in this last case of the Mishnah? That when you have an achais isha, which you did mimer for her, that is what creates the problem for the other wife, for the tzara, because there's already a connection through the maimer, and therefore also the tzara will be a problem to do yibum. So the Gemara, not time, the only reason why there's a problem over here with the yibum is because the avod maimer, because with the sister he did maimer for her. And that creates already a level of connection, and therefore for the tzara as well, there's no yibum. But if he did not do Maimer, meaning, again, one of the brothers that was married to one of the sisters passed away. And the brother married to a Nochris, to an unrelated wife, is the only one that could do Yibum. The other brother is married to a sister. But he did not do Yibum yet. There was just a Zika that he was supposed to do Yibum. And he passes away without doing any Yibum. So now when he passes away, there is the wife that he was married to, which is a Nochris. But there was another woman, one of the sisters, that was also already connected to him. There was already a zike. In such a case, what would we say? That Nochris, Yevumi Navim Veyavma. That the Nochris, that wife that he was married to fully, and she's a Nochris, she's unrelated, so the other brother that's left, that's alive, can go ahead and do Yivum for her. Now, what's the Chiddush in this case? There's a Svara to say that the moment the brother, the first brother, passes away and he's married to one of the sisters, so now there's a zika here. There's a connection only to this brother that's married to Anachris. He's the only one that could do Yibum. And if there's a zika, so we learned already earlier in the Gemara, 
the concept of yesh zika would mean that it's as if she's already his wife and if so now when this brother that's married to a nochris passes away so he has his wife the nochris but there's also a zika to one of the sisters which is also like a wife so if, if she's already like a wife so then that should pater the nochris from yibum because she's a tzara of the achaisisha which is already like his wife so we don't say that. That's what we see from our Mishnah. So Amar Rav Nachman, so Rav Nachman says, Zoy say Meres, the fact that the Zika alone of the Achois Isha is not enough to pater the Tzara, the other wife, the Nochris that he's married to. So this teaches us that Ein Zika, that that connection is not counted as a connection. The Zika of, of Bayibum is not a connection like a wife. And that's Vafila B'chadacha. Even over here in the case, we really, there's only one brother that could do the Yibum. The other brother is married to a sister, so he's not shaykh to Yibum either way. So even if there's only one brother that could do this Yibum, and you have that Zika here, it's not counted as a Zika, so that Achais Isha is not yet connected to you. And therefore, if he dies before he did any Maimer, so the Nochris would be able to do Yibum. So that's this Mishnah. So keep this in mind there. This will be in the Gea to the Hemshech of the Ahmed as well. So you see over here, our Mishnah proves Ein Zika. Only the Maimer creates that connection, but without the Maimer, the Zika alone does not create a connection like a wife. The next Mishnah is Oktelege Mishnah, Shloisha Achim, three brothers. Shnaimem Nesuim Shte Achayis, two of them are married to two sisters. Bechad Nosin Achris, and the third brother is married to an unrelated wife. Meis Hanosi Nochris. Now over here the case is different than the previous Mishnah. The one that was married to the Nochris is the one that passed away. What happened? The Konas Echad Mibali Achoyis Asishtoi. One of the brothers that is, is married, both of them are married to sisters, and either one of them could go ahead and do Yibum. One, one of them went ahead and did Yibum. Omeis, and now he also died. So what happens? So now this brother that did Yibum has two wives. One wife that he had was the original wife he had was a sister to the other brother that's still alive. And now he also did Yibum for a second wife, which is the, the Nochris, the unrelated wife. So what's the halacha here? The same like the previous Mishnah, and this is the simple din of the beginning of the Masechta. Harishayna. So the first wife, over here Harishayna means the first wife that he was married to, which was a sister, is Yaitzes Mishum Achaisisha. So for her there's no Yibum now for the brother that's still alive because she's a sister to his wife. Shniya, now the second wife that he married, which is the Nochres, so Mishum Tzadasa. Also there's no Yibum for her because she's a Tzara of an Erva. Similar, the Mishnah continues, also Ba Maimer, if he went ahead and did Maimer in this Nochris. So again, we're talking about one of the brothers that was married to one of the sisters. And now, in addition to being married to a sister, he also did Maimer, a Kedushim Rabbanon, for the Nochris from his brother that passed away. So then, what's going to be the Aloche, O Meis, after he did Maimer, he passed away. So the Nochris is Chaletzes Veloy Misya Bemes. The Nochris that he did Maimer for, so now for her, you could only do Chalitza and not Yibum. Because he's married, originally he's married to a sister. So therefore, for that sister, when he passes away, there is no Yibum because she's a Chais Isha for the brother that's still alive. So just like for the Erva, for the Achais Isha, there's no Yibum. So for the Nochris that he now did Maimer for, there's also going to be no Yibum. It's going to pat to her as well. So now again, but the point over here is it's only a Kedushin with the Rabbanon. So therefore we can't say that she'll be totally potter and not to have to do Chalitza either. She'll have to do at least Chalitza since this Kedushin is only a Kedushin with the Rabbanon. Similar to the Allah of the previous Mishnah. So the Gemara right away asks, Frek the Gemara Hosu Lamali. Why do I need the Gemara or the Mishnah here to teach me the same Allah basically the second time again? Hainu Hach, it's pretty much the same Allah. The only difference between the two cases is, is that in the, in the previous case, what happened was that one of the brothers that was married to her sister died. And now the one that was married to her nachris did Yibum. So over there the case is that his first wife, his full wife that is, is an unrelated wife. And the wife which he only did Maimah for is the Achaisisha, is the Erva. In this case, it's the exact opposite. His first wife, his full married to wife, is the Achaisisha. 
The second wife that he only did Maimer for, that's the one which is the Nochris. That's the only difference between the two cases, but otherwise it's basically the same. But the Gemara now actually says, if you look at these two cases, you'll see that it's actually a Kav here. If when it comes to the case over here, if in the first Mishnah, where the halacha is, you have the achais isha, so this achais isha, he did maimah for her. She's not the full wife. And she is a tzara to the nochris, the unrelated wife, she is the full wife. So, so again, the full wife, that's the, 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 the nochris, right? And the achais isha, he only did maimah for her. So Amrit, nevertheless, you say that nochris asura. That even though the Achais Isha, which is the source of the problem, which is the source of the issue, she's the Erve, and she's only married with Maimer. It's not even, it's only a marriage with the Rabbanon. But that is enough to make a problem that the Tzara as well, which is fully married, should not be able to do Yibum. So that's a Chiddush. Even though the Achais Isha, which is the source of the problem, was only married with Maimer. So if so, over here in the second Mishnah, it should be a kavachayim because here, what's the case? The nachris have etzara la isha. The wife that he's married to fully is the achayis isha. So it's poshit that the achayis isha here is a problem of an erve. He's fully married to her. The tzara, the second wife, which is the nachris, the secondary wife that he only did maimer for, that's uh, that's the nachris. So we hear leikol shekain. Most definitely, the achayis isha should cause a problem for the nachris because over here the achayis isha he's fully married to. So for sure, the Achais Isha should cause a problem to the Nachris, which is only married to with Maimer, which is sort of a secondary, she's toffel to the Achais Isha, which is fully married. So why would the Mishnah have to teach the Halacha over here, of this second Mishnah, again, repeating the same Halacha as before, and it's actually a Kav Achaymer? Answers the Gemara, Tana, so the Tana of these Mishnah is here, Hach Tana Beresha. First, he taught the second Mishnah. In the case of the second Mishnah, where the Achais Isha, you're fully married to her, so that's certainly going to be an erve, and it's going to cause a heter also for the Tzara, even though the Tzara is only married with Maimer. But the Achais Isha you're fully married to, that's the case that he said first, and that's the case that certainly there's going to be a heter. And the Hach, and the other case of the previous Mishnah, where the Achais Isha, you're not even fully married to her, you're only married to her with Maimer, Chazila Tere. It seemed to him that in that case, it would be mutter to do yibum for the nachris. Because the achais isha, which is the source of the problem, you only did maima for her. It's not even a full marriage. That's what he thought in the beginning. So that would be v'sharia, that would be allowed. V'hodor, but then he changed his mind. Chazi sura. Then he came to the conclusion that no, even in that case where the achais isha is married to you just with maima, not with a full marriage, that's enough to create an iser for the tzara. And even there, the tzara will be yasa. So that was a bigger chiddush that he came to. So now what happened? If I did a chavivale, because the first missionary of the case where the achayis isha is not even fully married, so that's a bigger chiddush that she causes an iser. She's an erva and will also patter the tzara of yivum. So therefore that's chavivale. This is more beloved to him, this halacha, because it's a bigger chiddush, aktama. So he taught that missionary, the chiddush, first. The second Mishnah, which you can take a learn from a Kava Chaymer, over here the Achais Isha that causes the problem for the Tzara, you fully married to the Achais Isha, but still he left that Mishnah in place after he taught it first, before he came to the bigger Chiddush. Again, we begin with the case of Shloy Shachen. All the Mishnah is here start with Shloy Shachen, but the case afterwards changes. So the Mishnah, Shloy Shachen, you have three brothers here. Shnai Mem, Nusun Two of them are married to brothers. And the, thir- and the third one is married to an unrelated wife. One of the brothers married to a sister, passed away. So now, who's going to do Yibom? The only one that could do Yibom is the one that's married to a Nochris. So the Konas, Nosi, Nochris, a sister. So the one that's married to the Nochris, he's the one that went ahead and did Yibom. The other one is married to his wife's sister, to his wife, is a sister to the Yavama. So he couldn't do Yibum. So the Nasi Nachris did Yibum. Well, now, but what happened? Something changed. But now the other brother that's still alive, that was married to a sister, his wife passes away. Okay, so now he's not married anymore to a sister. She's not alive anymore. And now the brother that's married to a Nachris, now he passes away. 
So now this brother that passes away was married to two wives. He was married to a Nochris, and now he also did Yibum to one of the sisters. But now the a brother that's still alive should be able to do Yibum for, you would think, should be able to do Yibum for any of these women. Why? Because even though before he was married to a sister, but now his wife passed away. You only are not allowed to marry a sister of your wife while your wife is alive. But now that his wife passed away, he should be able to do Yibum to any of these women. To his wife's sister, it's not his wife's sister anymore, and also to the Nachris. So therefore, they should, you should be able to do Yibum for both of them. So, but the, nevertheless, the Mishnah says the Chidesh, Harei, Zu, Asura, Allah, Velomis. But nevertheless, this sister will be also for this brother that was married to her sister, will be also forever. Why? Because since before, when she fell for Yibum the first time, then he was still married to her sister, and then she was also to him. So even though now, when she falls Yibum a second time from the second brother that passed away, and now she's not married to her sister anymore, but nevertheless, once the Issa took effect the first time she fell for Yibum, that Issa remains forever. Rav Yehuda Omer taught the following halacha. Call Yevame any time you have a Yevame. She ain't any kind of nefila that when she falls for Yevame, I can't apply for her the mitzvah of Yevame Yavayaleo to go and be meyavim her. So then, harehi keeshes och she yesh labanim. So then, this is considered to be like your brother's wife when he has children. And then vasura olav elamis. If that, if it's like your brother has children and she's eshes och, so she's an erve and she's aser forever. Even if something changes later, and whatever erva was in the beginning, and therefore she wasn't roi to Yibum, now she is, but it doesn't matter. If, when she fell originally for Yibum, she was Aser, so her status now becomes as an Eishis Och that has children, and that's an Isser forever, and it doesn't change. That was the Allah Rav Yudam Rav says. Okay, so the Gemara asks him this, my Kamash what's the Chiddush that Rav is teaching me here? Tanina, this is the Allah that the Mishnah here is saying. The Mishnah here says that when you had this brother that passed away, and now his other, one of the brothers is married to a sister. So it's not shaykh to yivum to that brother, but could do yivum to another brother that's married to an unrelated wife. But then when the second brother passes away, what do we say? Even if the brother that was married to a sister is not married to that sister anymore, she passed away, the Issa remains forever. That was the Allah of our mission, exactly what Rav said. Tanina reizu asur alav elamis, hoyel v'nesr alav shoachas. Because when she fell for Yibum the first time, she was Aser. So therefore, even if now, when she falls for Yibum for a, for a second time, now he's not married to her sister anymore, she'll still be Aser. So what, uh, what is Rav's Chiddush? Says the Gemara, no, there's a Chiddush over here. Because Mao the Teme, I would think to say, Hanimili, when do I say this halacha? That if when she fell for Yibum the first time, and then she was Aser, then she remains Aser forever. So when is this? That's if nothing changes, there's no Heta that comes about now during this Nefila of Yibum, during this time when she's up for Yibum. But if in that very time, when she fell for Yibum, something changes and now she becomes mutter, maybe that should be mutter, maybe that should be allowed. So as Rashi explains, in the case of the Mishnah, when this sister fell for Yibum the first time, she was not a, she was also for Yibum for that brother that's still married to her sister. Only when she fell for Yibum the second time, that's when the wife of the other brother already passed away, and now she's available for Yibum for that brother. So the heter only comes about by the second Yibum. That's the case of our Mishnah. But let's say if the case would be that when she fell for Yibum the first time, and she couldn't do Yibum for the brother that's still married to her sister, but he do, he, that sister passes away during this time period of the first Yibum. So over here, the Mishnah is not telling me this halacha. Over here, maybe I would think that if the had to happen at this, in, within this time of Yibum, maybe over here I would think that that hetter does take effect. Only if during this entire Nefil Rishayin of Yibum there's no hetter. Then I say that the Isra remains forever. But if within that time of Yibum, the brother, his wife passed away, so maybe it should change and he should, she should be mutter for Yibum for him. Kamash Malon, that's what Rav was teaching, that even if the Heta comes about within the same Nefila, that the brother's wife, which is a sister, passes away, then 
even before the second brother does Yibum, still she remains also forever. But this as well, this halacha that when there's a heter that comes about within the first time of Yibum, we learned in the Mishnah later. The Mishnah says, two brothers that were married to two sisters. And one of these brothers died. So now, when this first brother died, the second brother cannot do Yibum. He's married to a sister. But then the sister passes away. And not uh, yet, the sister married to the brother passes away. So even though the sister passed away, she remains also forever. Because she was also for one moment. In other words, in the beginning when she, when she fell for Yibum. So what do you understand from here? It says clearly here, this halacha, that even if it's in the same nefila of Yibum, if in the beginning he was a brother married to a sister and he couldn't do Yibum, even if that changed and his wife passed away and there's a heter in the same nefila, still it's also forever. So what do you need Rav to teach me this halacha that even if there's a heter in the same nefila, the heter does not take effect? It's clearly in that Mishnah later. Answers the Gemara. There, no, there is still a Chiddush, there's another case, there's a Chiddush in what Rav is saying over here. Ma'o de teime, I would think to say, Hosom over there, in that Mishnah. Later, where it talks only about two brothers, which means there's only one brother that was married to a sister, that was here, theoretically, to do Yibum. So over there I would say, Hu de itchile mahai beisel legamri. Since in the beginning there was an Isra for him to do any Yibum, and that means that there's going to be no Yibum for this woman at all, because there's no other brother that's married, there's no third brother that is here to do Yibum. So once she's pushed off from Yibum completely, so then I would say, even if a Hatta came about later, it doesn't change. She was already totally pushed off from Yibum, she can get married to whoever she wants. Avol Hocha, but over here in our case, where we're talking about three brothers, so even if originally she fell for Yibum and she was also for one brother, because he was married to a sister, but she was still mutter to another brother, which is married to an Achris. So she's not totally absolved from the mitzvah of Yibum. So in such a case, amen, maybe I should say, because even originally when she was also for Yibum for one brother, but she was still Roy for Yibum for another brother. So so Nasi Nachris, in Lahai Nasi Nachris, she was she was Roy for that brother that was married to a Nachris, even though she was also to the other brother married to her sister. So if something changes now, and now the brother that's married to her sister his wife passes away and now he becomes Roy to Yibo, maybe the Hatta should take effect. Maybe the Hatta does not take effect only in the case where she was totally pushed off of Yibum. Like in the case when there's two brothers, only one is available to do Yibum. But in the case where the two brothers were available to do Yibum, so because she was never totally pushed off of the mitzvah of Yibum, maybe here I should say that the Hatta for the brother that was also before, but now his wife passed away, maybe that Hatta should take effect. Kamash Mulan, so that was the Chiddush of Rav, specifically Beniget to this case. Zagdeil Gemishne, Shloishachim, three brothers. Shnaim Emnesu and Shteachoyais, two of them are married to two sisters. Ve'echad Nasi Nochris, and the third brother is married to an unrelated wife. Giddish, Echad Mibale Achoyais, a sister. Now, one of these brothers married to a sister, divorced his wife. That's the first thing that happened. Number two, the next thing that happened is Umeis Nosi Nochris. And now the brother married to the Nochris passed away. So now either of these brothers could go and do Yibum for this wife. Now the Kinsa Hamagarish, the one that divorced his wife, that was a sister, went and did Yibum for her. Umeis, and now he passed away. So now the brother that's alive, could he go ahead and do Yibum for his wife, which was a Nochris? So the Mishnah says, yes, Zui Amru. This is the halacha that we learned in the Mishnah in the beginning of the Mesechta, the Kulan. All of the cases of Arayas that we spoke about in the Mishnah. So the halacha of the Arayas is that anytime there's an Erve, there's no Yibum if there's an Erve. And also for the Tzara of the Erve, there's no Yibum either. But when is there no Yibum for the Tzara of the Erve? Only if the Erve is still married to her. But for all of them, Shemeso and Izgarshu, if the Erve died, or the Erva was divorced already, then so the same with Taris. So then the Tzara, you could do Yibam for her. So over here in this case, because the brother that was married to her sister, an Erva, he divorced her already from before. And now he's married to this Nochris, 
So therefore, the last brother that's still alive can do Yibon for this Nachris. So the Gemara here is going to be Midayik in the Seder of the Mishnah. And we're going to discuss exactly when does this Halacha apply that if you Megadish the Erve, now you can do Yibon for the Tzara. And the Petor on the Tzara does not apply anymore. And the Gemara here is going to be based on two points. The first point the Gemara is going to be based on is this Halacha, as we'll see in the Hab Shach of the Gemara, there's a Machlaikis about this. When I say that he divorced the erva, at what point did he divorce the erva? According to one opinion, as long as he divorced that erva before he passed away, even though he was married to the erva and to the tzara together, but still, because he divorced her before he passed away, and now there was only one that tzara that was up for yibum, you can do yibum for that tzara. But there's another opinion that as long as he was married to the erve and the tzara at the same time, even if he divorced the erve before he passed away, but that's too late. Since he was married to both of them together, so therefore the erve will answer the tzara from doing any yibum here. The Gemara here in the beginning is going to be based on this opinion, that as long as he's married to the erve and the tzara at the same time, even if he later divorces the erve, there's no yibum for the tzara anymore. That's the first point. The second point the Gemara is going to discuss is Yesh Zike or Ein Zike regarding this subject. What happens if you have a person that's married to a, chais, to, to a sister, like the case over here. But now there's a Zike from a Nochris. So that Zike of the Nochris, is that like they're already married or not? Yesh Zike or Ein Zike? That will be the second point that the Gemara will discuss over here in the Diak of the Mishnah. Well, now let's see it inside. Time, the reason why I say over here that because you divorced the erve, so therefore now you could do yibum for the zike, the girish, the order of what happened is first the brother that was married to the sister divorced his wife, which was an erve, and then the other brother married to the nachris died, so the zike to this brother only began after he already divorced his wife. But if the case would have been that first the brother married to the Nochris died. So now the Zike to the brother that's married to his sister began already. And Vachakach only afterwards did he divorce his wife. Asuda, in such a case it seems that when he passes away and now the last brother has to do Yibim for this Nochris, it would be us of him to do Yibim for the Nochris. Why is that? Why should it be us of him to do Yibim for this Nochris if he divorced the wife that was a sister. So now that Tzara is not anymore Tzara of an Erve. And he actually even divorced her before he did Yibum for her. He only divorced her after the Zike began, but he divorced her before he did Yibum for her. So why should that now stop the Yibum for the Tzara when he passes away? And now the last brother would have to do Yibum, and now it's Yibum just for this Tzara. And he already divorced his wife. Why can't he do Yibum for her? So Ravashi, Ravashi says, Zoi say meres. The mission over here, you could learn out from it that it's telling you, Yesh Zike, that when you have a Zike, then the Zike is like she's your wife to some extent. And I feel a bit Even when that Zike is for two brothers that can do the Zike, I say that it's like a wife. So over here in this case, as soon as the, the brother that was married, married to the Nochris dies, so I say yes, Zike, to the brother that's married to a sister. So therefore it's as if he was married at the same time to a sister and also to this Nachris. Even though he's not married to the Nachris yet, but yes, Zike. So now, even if he's going to divorce the sister after he already had a Zike to this Nachris, it's too late. He was already married as if he's married to both of them together at the same time. And therefore, when he dies, the next brother cannot do Yibum on this Tzara because he divorced the wife too late. That's what I learn out from here. But again, as I said before, our Gemara is premised on the fact that as long as you were married to the Tzara and the Erve at the same time, even if you divorced the Erve before you died, it's too late because you was married to both of them together. Frek, the Gemara, Ul, Ravashi, but now according to Ravashi's Diak of this Mishnah, the Tatana holds Yash Zike, Kashye, Rav Nachman, but we'll have a question of what Rav Nachman was dying in the beginning of the Samad. In the beginning of the Yomud, what did Rav Nachman learn out? From this that the Mishnah there said regarding a case where you have a person that's married to a Nochris and then there was, a, there was an Achais Isha that fell for Yibun to him. 
So from the Mishnah there before it said that Asaba Maimer. Only if he made Maimer in her, then I say that the Maimer makes a connection and it's going to ask her to do any Yibum for the Tzara. But the Gemara of Nachman there was Medayik, if he did not do Maimer, just the fact that there was a Zika, that's the, we say it's not considered to be like a wife. Ein Zika. So there's no connection between the Tzara and this Achais Isha that now fell for Yibum. And therefore you can still do Yibum for the Tzara. So from the beginning, for Rav Nachman was medayik there, that ain't zike. And here Rav Ashi is being medayik, that yash zike. Amalach Rav Ashi, so Rav Ashi answers you, who are then, that over there, really in the Mishnah, the beginning of the Yomot, the truth is, Afagav, the Le'ovet Ba Maimer, even if he did not do Maimer as well, still the Halacha remains the same, that Nochris, Melchletz Chaltze, Yevumu Lemi Yavme. The very fact that it was a zike to an Achais Isha over here, the, the, to a woman that's a chais isha, that already, zika already creates a problem for the tzara that you cannot do yibum, even if there wasn't maimer. But, v'ha diktani maimer, why does it say the Mishnah only the case where he did maimer in, one, in that sister and only then is it a problem? The answer is, la fuke mi beshamay. It's saying it actually to become only to exclude from Beishamai's opinion. What does Beishamai hold? The Omar, as we learned before already, or the Omri, Beishamai say, Maimer, Kaina, Kenyan, Gomer. Once you do Maimer, Maimer is really a Kenyan Gomer in Atayra, and therefore, if he did Maimer for this sister, so it's as if he's, he's here, he is already married to this sister together with the Nachris. And therefore, for the Nachris, you don't need any yibum or chalitza either, because it's already completely a tzara serva. So therefore, kamash malon, the mission is teaching me the like beshamai that the maimer is not a full kenyan; it's only a kedushim b'drabanon. And therefore, even though because of the maimer you won't be able to do yibum, but you still will need chalitza. So the only reason the Tanah chose Maimer is to exclude from Bishami's opinion. But really, even without the Maimer, I say Yesh, Zike, and the Zike would already force the Tzara to be able to do only Chalitze and not Yibum. So this is Ravashi's opinion. That the Tana in the beginning of the, of the Omad and the end of the Omad holds that Yesh, Zike. All Rav Nachman, but now according to Rav Nachman, Kashir the Ravashi, Rav Nachman, which was Medayik of the Mishnah in the beginning of the Omad, that he holds Ein Zike, so how is he going to answer over here in the end of the Yomod, where the Tana specifically says that he already divorced his wife, the brother, the brother that was married to one of the sisters, already divorced his wife before the Zike began, before the other brother, <coughs> sorry, that's married to the Nochris dies, why does he say that he was Megadish before the Zike? Why can't we say that he died even after the Zike? Or again, he was Megadish, his wife that is, after the Zike. If you hold Ein Zike, so then there's no difference if he was Megadish, his wife, the sister, before the Zike or after the Zike. So the Rav Nachman, Kashi the Ravashi, according to Rav Nachman, the Diak of Ravashi will remain a question. We see from this Mishnah that he holds Yesh Zike. If you're going to want to answer and say, who are then really... The diuk over here that Ravashi made is not a diuk, and really the same halacha will apply. Afilu meis ve'achakach girish, even if the brother married to the nochris died first. So the zike already began to the other brothers that are married to the sisters, and only afterwards one of the brothers divorced his wife. Even then, sarasa muteres, the halacha will still be that the tzara will be mutter, and the reason would be because ein zike. The fact that the zike began before doesn't matter. See, so we're not going to be medayik in the Mishnah only in the case of Girish v'achakach meis. The same halacha will apply even if meis v'achakach Girish. But here's the thing though, there's a diak in the Mishnah that the case of the Mishnah is precise and it's coming to be medayik something. What is that? Because the Mishnah says, Elo, if so, zu he, when the Mishnah says zu he, this is the case that we say that if you divorce the erve, that the tzara is allowed for yibum, lo mutimai. This language of Zuhi, what would it come to exclude? According to Ravashi, we know what it excludes. It excludes a case where Meis v'achakach girish. The brother married to the Nochris died first, the Zika already began, and then the other brother married to the sister, divorced his wife afterwards. So that's too late because Yash Zike. But according to Rav Nachman of Ein Zike, like we just said, it should make no difference if the, if the Gerishin of the sister was before the Zika began or after the Zika began. Says the Gemara, now the Gemara goes back to the point 
that I began with, which is that there's really a machloikis b'chlal b'negei to this whole halach of you divorce the erve, that you can now do yibum for the tzara, whether that applies even if you were married to both of them at the same time, as long as you divorce that erve before you pass away. And that's a machloikis here, and the Gemara will now explain. So the Gemara, so the mu'ute, According to Rav Nachman, we could say that when it says here in the Mishnah Zuhi, what is it coming to exclude? Kines v'achakach girish. Okay, so till now we were discussing whether the girishin of this sister happened before the zike or after the zike. Okay, so according to Rav Nachman, that does not matter because ain't zike. But now the Gemara says, let's go to the next step. How about if this brother that divorces the erve, the sister, he first did Yibum, so he already married her. And now, afterwards, he went and divorced his wife. That's the case that it's coming to exclude. Kinis, when he already did Yibum, Vachakach Girish, and then he divorced his wife, the sister, that's too late. Because over here, since he was actually married to them both at the same time, so even if he divorces her afterwards, the Tzara will not be Roy for Yibum. If he di- divorced, the sister before he was miyabim her, so then it's okay because he holds ein zike. Doesn't matter if you divorced her before the zike, after the zike, ein zike. So there was no marriage yet. But if kinis, if he married her, now they were married at the same time. Now it's too late for a divorce. This would be the case that we're coming to exclude, says the Gemara. But this is actually a machloikis, and this machloikis actually is based right over here on on, on the, we had this before in the Gemara on Dafyud Gimel. The Gemara there asked, this is the mission in the beginning of the Mesechta, that brings this halacha, that if you megarish the erve, now the tzara could do yibum, and you have that halacha the way it's brought in our Mishnah. And the Gemara before was Medayik, that in the, in the Mishnah, in the beginning of the Mesechta, when it brings this halacha, it's mashma that there's no chiluk benigayet to this gedishin of the erve. Meaning, as long as the brother that died was megarish the erve before he passed away, so the tzara is, could, could go ahead and do yibum to the, to the other brother that's alive. That's what it's mashma there. But from our Mishnah here, it brings the case that he divorced his wife before. So from our Mishnah, the Gemara was medayik, that it's mashma only if he divorced his wife before. And he never was married to the erve and the tzara at the same time. Only then do I say that if you divorce the erve, that you can do yibum for the tzara. So now the Gemara says, if you want to tell me that our mission is coming to be Mimayit, this case of Kinnis v'achakach girish, that doesn't work according to everybody's opinion. Ha niche, this would work, Yisavah like Rav Yirmiya. If Rav Nachman would hold like Rav Yirmiya, the Omar, what did Rav Yirmiya say regarding this contradiction of the two Mishnayis? Again, the mission of the beginning of the Mesech, is mashma, that it doesn't make a difference. If he was married to both the Tzara and the Arab at the same time, as long as he was Megadasher before he passed away. And therefore, Rav Yirmiya said, Tavre, this is, there's a contradiction here. Mi Shoshanazu, the one that said the Mishnah in the beginning of the Mesechta, Loi Shonazu, did not say the Mishnah at the end of the, uh, over here, the Ar Mishnah over here. And what he said is as follows. The high Tanisavar, the Mishnah in the beginning of the Mesechta holds, Mise Mapelas. Only when the brother dies, that's when the mitzvah of Yibun begins. So as long as he was Megadish, the Erva, before then, so now the Tzara could go ahead and do Yibun. But the high Tana Sava, the Tana of our Mishnah over here holds that that's too late. The Suin Harishainim Apilim. When he gets married to his wives, that's the original cause for the Yibum. Even though there's no mitzvah of Yibum at that point, the, the husband is still alive. But because he got married to them, and if he dies later, then the mitzvah of Yibum will come. So it all starts from when he gets married to them. And therefore, our Tana over here, according to Rabbi Yirmiya, holds that as long as he was married to both of them at the same time, the Tzara and the Erve, then if he divorces the Erve, it's too late. So therefore, according to this, we could be takabi medayik over here in our Mishnah, that Zuhi lemote kinnis alibasayv girish. When it says over here the Lashon of Zuhi, so what is it coming to exclude? If he already went and married the Nachris, and only afterwards was in the Gadish the Erve, so then that's too late. So that would work if Rav Nachman holds like Rabbi Yirmiya. Ella, however, Isa v'loke Rave, if Rav Nachman holds like Rave, Rave holds that according to everybody, it, 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 it doesn't make a difference here. As Gemara now says, the Oma, Rave says, La'oilam chatanuhu. Really, the Tana in the beginning of the Mesechta, and the Tana in our Mishnah over here, when it brings the case of, of the Halacha, of being Megadish, the Erve, 
and the tzara becomes mutter, and it's all one opinion. And v'zu ve'ein tzarech loy mazu katani. In the Mishnah, in the beginning of the Masech, it tells you the full Chiddush, that even if he divorced his wife, the Erva that is, before he passed away, although they were married together, the Erva and the Tzara, he was married to both of them, doesn't matter, that's enough, that now as long as when he passed away, the Tzara could go ahead and do Yibum. And then in our Mishnah, it tells me a lesser Chiddush, ve'ein Tzarech Leiman, needless to say, that if he had already divorced the Erva from before he got married to the second wife, for sure the second wife could go ahead and do Yibum. But really, they both hold the same opinion that it only matters if he divorced his wife before he passed away. And it does not matter if he was married to the Tzara and the Erva at the same time. So if you go according to Rav, Zuhi Lamutimai, when it says in our Mishnah regarding this case over here, when he divorces the Erva, and it says Zuhi, specifically the way the Mishnah here describes the case, this is when I say if you divorce the Erva, the Tzara is is allowed to go and do Yibum, and it comes to exclude something. What is it coming to exclude? According to Rav Nachman, there's nothing to exclude. Why not? Because number one, Rav Nachman holds Ein Zike. So if you hold Ein Zike, it makes no difference if the case was Meis Va'acha Kach Girish, that the, meis, the, the husband of the Nochris passed away, and then the husband that married to the sister did, was Megadish the sister, or was the reverse? First he was Megadish's sister, and then the husband of the Nochris passed away. Because if Ein Zike, it makes no difference if there was a Zike before the Gerishin, or after the Gerishim. And also, regarding if he was married at any time, the Tzara and the Erva, he was married to both of them at any time together, that also doesn't matter. As long as he did a Gerishim of the Erva before he passed away. So now the Tzara could go ahead and do Yivum. So if, we, if he doesn't hold of any of these distinctions, in an, a, a, so then, Zuhi, when it says here in our mission that we're coming to be Memayit a certain case, what is that case that we're coming to be Memayit? Says the Gemara, so therefore you're right. What we'll have to say is, Al Rav Nachman only works according to Rav Yirmi's opinion. So the distinction of Zike, yeah, since we hold Ein Zike, so that distinction of when the brother married to the Nachris died, before the Gedishin or after the Gedishin, that does not matter. But what does matter is, the brother that was married to the sister, did he first do Yibn for the Nachris? Or did he first divorce the sister? Because according to Rav Yirmiya, as long as he was married to the Tzara and the Erva at the same time, if he would divorce the Erva afterwards, it's going to be too late. So that's what it's coming to be, Memayit. So Rav Nachman must go like Rav Yirmiya. Now the Gemara comes according to Rav's opinion. According to Rav, this Deek in the Mishnah of Zuhi, that it comes to be Medayik and to exclude something, what is it excluding? Excluding that is. All the Rav, now according to Rav's opinion, Ha niche, it would be understood, Isavala Kiravashi. If he holds like Ravashi, Ravashi holds Yash Zike, so it would make sense that we could say that our Mishnah is coming to exclude something. So if we if you remember what we said before, what did we say? What is the Mishnah coming to exclude according to Ravashi? That the Mishnah says only in a case of Girish, the brother married to the sister, first divorced that sister. Only afterwards Mais Nachris. Only afterwards did the Zika of the Nachris begin. Then I say that later you'll be able to do Yibum for this Tzara because the Zika began after he already divorced his wife. But if it was the reverse, if first the Zika began and then he divorced his wife, that would be too late. That was the Diyak that Ravashi said before, all based on Ravashi's Shitta of Yesh Zika. So now, similar, or not exactly similar, but based on this opinion of Yesh Zika, I could also say according to Rav. Now we cannot say the exact same exclusion like we're, according to Rav, like we're saying according to Ravashi. Because according to Ravashi, his opinion is, as long as he was married to the Tzara and the Erve at the same time, even if he divorces the Erve, which in this case is a sister, it's too late. So therefore, if you hold Yash Zike, it's like he was married to both of them at the same time, it's too late. But Rav disagrees with this. Rav's opinion is that you only look at the last moment if before he passed away it was Megadish the Erve, in this case the sister, that would be okay. So either way, according to Rav, it doesn't matter if you hold Yesh Zika or Ein Zika over here because we don't care if he was married to both of them at the same time as long as he divorces her, the Erve that is, before he passes away. So, but, but still, based on the Indian of Yesh Zike, if Rav holds like Ravashi that says Yesh Zike, I can say that Zuhi, when it says in the Mishnah over here, Zuhi, what is it coming to exclude? Lema'ute, it's excluding the case of Meis, when the brother that was married to the Nochris first passed away, Beloi Girish, 
And then the brother that was married to the sister, you have two brothers here that are married to sisters, none of them divorced their wife. And now one of them went ahead and did Yibum and never divorced his wife, which is his sister. And now he passes away. Or, uh, sorry, actually the case over here is, never ended up doing Yibum. There was only Zika here. Again, the, the brother that was married to the Nochris passed away. Now there was a Zika to both of these brothers. And now one of the brothers married to the sister passes away. So now in such a case, this is the case that it's coming to exclude and it's telling you that over here, the brother that's still alive cannot do Yibum for this Nochris. Why not? Even though his brother that was married to his sister that just died, was never married to this Nochris, but there was a Zika that he had to this Nochris. And because there was a Zika he had to this Nochris, she's considered to be already a Tzara of the Erva. And that's the case that we're coming to exclude, that the last brother that's alive will not be able to do even for her. So that, that exclusion would work if you hold Yash Zika, if Rav holds like Rav Ashi. But Eli, Savala Rav Nachman, if Rav holds like Rav Nachman, so therefore there is no Zika. So you can't say that it comes to exclude this case. There's no zikah, so in such a kind of case where the brother, the brother married to the Nachlis dies and none of the other two brothers married to sisters ever ended up doing yibum, there'd be no problem if the, one of those brothers married to a sister passes away for the other brother to go ahead and do yibum for the tzara. Why not? The Ein Zika. That tzara was never married to the brother that was married to the sister at the same time. So according to Rav Nachman, this exclusion would not work. So Zuhi l'mutemai. So then what case, according to Rav, would Zuhi come to exclude? al So you're right, you're going to have to say that he holds like Ravashi. So Rav must hold like Ravashi, that yesh zike, and Rav Nachman must hold like Rav Yirmiye, that holds that if kinis, the achakach girish, in such a case, the, you will not be able to do Yibum for the Tzara because there was a point in time where this brother was married to the Erva and to the Tzara at the same time. Now, all of these cases that we just mentioned, which is the cases of an Erva, and there's another Tzara here that he's married to, but he was not 100% for sure married to this Erva. There was a Suffolk condition for this erva, or there was a Suffolk gedushin for this erva. So in all of these cases, so because it's a Suffolk, so for the tzara you can't do yibum. Maybe she's a tzara of an erva, but you don't do, you can't let her go to be mutter to anybody either. Maybe she was not a tzara of an erva. So therefore, you have to do chalitza. Keitzad, what's the case over here? Ke- or Keitzad, Suffolk Kedushin, what's the case where there's a Suffolk Kedushin? Zorak lo Kedushin. If the husband threw a Kedushin to his wife, which in this case we're talking about, he threw the Kedushin to his wife, which was an erve to, to one of the other brothers. Suffolk Kod of Loi, Suffolk Kod of Law. It's a Suffolk whether the Kedushin fell close to his wife or close to him. So we don't know if the Kedushin took effect. Rashi here brings one of the Pshat of the Gemara in Gittin that we're speaking about a case where there was exactly eight Amis between the husband and the wife. And the halacha is, if something lands within your Dalar Amis, you're kaina. So when he threw it to her, it's not clear if it landed in the Dalar Amis of the husband. So the wife was not kind of the Kesef Kedushin, or it landed within four Amis of the wife, and therefore she was kind of the Kesef Kedushin. Zeo Safi Kedushin. That's the case of Safi Kedushin. Safik Gedishin. What's the case of Safik Gedishin? So the Mishnah here says, Kosav Biksav Yodoi, if you wrote her a get with his own handwriting, but Vein Olav Edim, there's no Edim that signed on this. Yes, Olav Edim, or it has Edim, but Vein Baizman, doesn't have a date in the get. Yes, Baizman, it has a date in the get, but Vein Bai Ela Eid Echod, but only one Eid signed this get. Zel Suffolk Gedishin. These are cases of Suffolk Gedishin. Now the truth is, these are not exactly cases of Suffolk Gedishin, but these are cases of Gedishin that Minatayre, the Gedishin, takes effect, but only Midrabanon, the Gedishin, does not take effect. Because the first case, when he wrote it, but he did not have Adam sign it, so Minatayre, the Get, could be a Kasha, the Get, as long as he gave her the Get in front of Adam. And the case where he didn't write a date, Minatayre, you don't have to write a date, or in a case where one date signed, that's also good enough Minatayre. So here, the Mishnah does not bring a case of Suffolk Gedishin. The Gemara brings the Mishnah, that is, brings a case of a Gedishin that's Menatayra, but not Medrabona. So the Gemara now will right away address, what's the difference between Suffolk Kedushin and Suffolk Gedishin? 
Why, regarding Sophic Kedushin, does it actually bring this case of Sophic Kedushin, Sophic Kod of Law, Sophic Kod of Law? When it comes to the case of Gedushin, it doesn't bring that same case. When it comes to the case of Gedishin, Sophic Kod of Law, Sophic Kod of Law. So the case of whether he, maybe we could say the same thing regarding a get. He threw the get to her, and it's a Sophic whether the get landed closer to her or closer to him. That would be the regular case of Sophic Gedishin, just like Kedushin. Like Katani, that the Mishnah does not say. My time, why not? Omar Abbe, Sarabe answers, because there's a big difference between Sophic Kedushin and a Sophic Gedishin regarding this case that we're talking about, that there's the Tzara and there's the Erve, and regarding this Erve, there's a Sophic Kedushin or Sophic Gedishin on her. So now, regarding Sophic Gedishin, Omar Abbe, Isha Zu, Becheskas, Medes, because we know that the Tzara did have another erve that was the other wife that was married to this brother. So that's the Chazake. The Chazake is that he was married to her and therefore the Tzara does not need any Yibum and she's totally Mutal Shuk. That was her Chazake. Umi Safik. And now because maybe there was a Gedishin for the erve, Atabala Isra. So now you want to ask her to go get married to wherever she wants. Al Tasrena Misafik. You can't ask her because of a Suffolk Gedishin for that erve, and therefore the Tzara, you put her on the Chazaka, and she would be allowed to go and get married to whoever he wants. She wants, that is. That's why over there it didn't say the case of Suffolk Gedishin, rather the case of a Gedishin mit Rabbanon. Amalei Abaye, so Abaye asks on this, if you're saying this regarding this case of Suffolk Gedishin, say the same thing by Kedushin. Ihochi, if so, be Kedushin Nami. By the case of Kiddushin as well, she also has a prior Chazake. What's her prior Chazake? That she was the only wife. And there was no Erev here Bechlau. And therefore she was up for Yibum. Now you have a Suffolk. Maybe there's also a Kiddushin for an Erev. And therefore she can't go and do Yibum. So if so, say the same thing over here. Name, uh, let's say there's a Chazake here. Ishizu Becheskes Hetel Yavam Medes. So this wife, there was a Cheskes Hetel. She was the only wife. She can do Yibum. Um Safik at the Bala Isra, and now maybe there was a condition for another er- for Erva here. So now you want to ask her to her Yavam. So Al Tasrana Misafik, how could you ask her because of the Safik? You have to put her on her prior Chazaka that she was mutter for Yibum. So the Gemara answers, you're right, you really should put her on this Chazaka. But Hasam Lachumra. We're going to ask her to do Yibum, we're going to be Machmer that maybe that condition took effect for the Erva, and therefore she's a Tzara of an Erva, and she won't be able to do Yibum. Wait a minute, you're going to make a Chumre to consider the condition of the Erva, that we say that it took effect? But hi Chumre, that kind of a Chumre to consider the condition of the Erva to be a real condition is a Chumre da Asila de Kola. This is a Chumre that could lead to a Kola, that could lead to a big leniency to a problem. If you consider him to be married, why is that? Zimnen, because sometimes what could happen is either the Azalhu or Mekadash Lala Chaisa. So this brother that was married to the Tzara, and now he's, he gave a Safi Kedushin for, uh, uh, for someone else, and now it's a Safi Kedushin. What happens if he also gave a Kedushin, Vadai? Oh, go ahead. Again, the Lashon of the Gemara here. Zimnin the Azul who Mekadosh lo la Chayso Kedushin Vade. What's if now, after this Safi Kedushin, he went and gave a Vade Kedushin for a sister? Not, in other words, not that he threw it there and you're not sure if it landed and close to her or not. He went and gave her a ring. He was Mekadosh, a sister Vade. So now, what's going to be the Allah? Does the Kedushin for the sister take effect? The Kedushin for the sister is a Safik. The first Kedushin is a Safik. The second Kedushin is a Safik. That's what the Allah should be. Now, by the Inami, or there's another case that could happen here, which is Zimnen the Azal Acher on the Kadesh La Lidida. This woman that is a Safik Kedushin on her, maybe someone else would go, a second person would go and be Mekadosh or Kedushi A Kedushin that's a real and a good Kedushin. So now, what's really the halach here? Both the first and the second Kedushin are a Safik. If the first Kedushin is a Safik, so the second Kedushin, which was the Kedushi Vada, he did a proper Maisi Kedushin, but if it's, it's a Safik Kedushin. Maybe the first Kedushin took effect. But now, if you're going to be Machmer and say that we're considering the, this Safik Kedushin to be a good Kedushin, to be machmer for the tzara not to do yibum. So now the kivin the asala mal tzara le yivumi. If you're being machmer now for the tzara not to do yibum, Amri, based on this chumre, people are going to come and say, why are we being machmer not to allow the tzara to get married to her yavam? The reason is the kama kedushin. 
because the Kiddushin of the Eve, which was in the Skadish over here with the Suffolk, people are going to say that was a good Kiddushin, and now with the Basra Olaf Kiddushin. Anyone else that would go and be in the Kaddish or even with the Kiddushi Vadai, after this person gave her a Kiddushi Suffolk, people are going to say that the second Kiddushin did not take effect because they're going to think that the Suffolk Kiddushin did take effect. And they'll say, look, I'll bring you an ayah that the Suffolk Kiddushin took effect because based on this Kiddushin, you're asking the Tzara to go ahead and do Yibum. You're saying that the Tzara is now a Tzara of this era because the Kiddushin take, takes effect. So basically, considering the condition of this Arabic to be a good condition could lead to a Kula that you'll consider it to be a real condition. And now if anyone else would be in the Kaddish, this woman that had a Suffolk condition on her, you'll think that for sure the second condition is not a good condition. Says the Gemara, no, people will not make such a mistake. Why not? Kivin the Kamatzrechis Chalitze. Because you're saying that, yeah, the, the tzara is not allowed to do yibum anymore because we're being machmer. Maybe the kedushin of the erva was a kedushin, but you're requiring her to do chalitza. Okay? You're not saying that the tzara is completely mutter because she's a tzara of an erva. So may the yadi, people will understand the chumra ba'al mahu, that this whole thing is just a chumra. Okay, so if so, that you're machmer over here regarding kedushin. And people will understand that it's only a chumre. So, ihochi, if so, gate a shunami. Say the same thing regarding the case where you said that there's an erva that was married together with the tzara, and there was a gate given, given, but now there's a suffix whether that gate took effect or not. So, over here as well, listni, let it say, vilitzracha, chalitza, let it say the case where there was a suffix gate And let us say regarding the case of Safigadishin that we require of the Tzara to do Chalitza, Umeida Yadi, and people will know the Chumra Baalmahu. People will understand that this that you're requiring a Chalitza is a Chumra Baalma. Because if it would not be a Chumra Baalma, if the Gadishin would have for sure taken effect, then you would say that the Tzara could go ahead and do Yibum. The fact that you're saying that she must do Dafka Chalitza, so that would, uh, people would understand that it's only a Chumra. So the, the question comes back that even Benigayat to Gerishin, it could say the same case of Safi Gerishin, like it says Benigayat to Safi Kiddushin, and you'll say the same Allah that you only do Chalitza, and people will not make any mistakes, they'll understand that it's a Chumra Baal Muhu. So the Gemara says, no, we can't allow her to go ahead and do Chalitza for the Tzara in such a case to do Chalitza. Why? Because if you're going to allow her to do Chalitza, she may make a mistake and do Yibum as well. She'll say, look, I'm allowed to do Chalitza. If I'm allowed to do Chalitza, so that means that the Gerishin of the Erev probably took effect. So I can do Yibum as well. And we actually can't do Yibum. Maybe the Gerishin did not take effect and therefore she's a Tzara of an Erev. So because you shouldn't confuse the heter of Chalitza that she could also do Yibum, they did not, in such a case, you would not be able to be Machmer that she should do Chalitza. Oh, Frek the Gemara, so they say the same thing when you get to Suffolk Kiddushin. Hochenami, if so, by the Suffolk Kiddushin as well, Imatoim Mechaletzes, if now that you're making this Chumre, that she has to do Chalitza because maybe the Kiddushin took effect, Misya Bemes. So then they're going to come to make a mistake and they might do Yibum as well. Says the Gemara, but over here we're not concerned about that. Vitis Yabim, even if she'll do Yibum, it doesn't bother Eim Bekachlum. It does not bother us. Why not? Because Because over here we're going to put her on the original Chazake, which is that she could do Kedushin. She was originally, her Chazake is that she was the only wife. Now there's a Suffolk, maybe there's a Kedushin for Erve as well. But her original Chazake is that she's the only wife that was married and therefore she's not a Tzara of an Erve. So if she'll make a mistake and won't be Machmer and will go ahead and do Yibam, we're not concerned about that. We just place her on her original Chazake.